just eat the beast. Hello? <laughs> there you oh. are. Oh. <laughs> I see. They all have their difference. Kind of like when you sing and you hit a high note, you got to pull out. Get your auto compression going on. I know, pulling out. <laughs> Ready to rock and roll? Pull. Awesome. Welcome. Hello, world, from iHeartMedia HQ in New York City. I am the Big Rig. This is Tobias Forge from Ghost, everybody. Welcome. <laughs> now, this is a very unique instance for me because this, to my knowledge, is the first time you are you as the director with me. In the past, well, the first time I met you was with Papa the Third, I think, and you. And that was a very unique experience. That was my introduction to the band, because for those of you who don't know, this goes all the way back to 2006, the brainchild, if you will. In your 20s at that point, when the, all of this kind of came to fruition in your mind, musically, your musical start? Yes, in 2006, I was 25. And here you are, so, 37? Yes. A father? Husband? Father of two, husband, yeah. What does the family think about what you do for a living? I think they're, they're uh, mostly positive, yeah. but of course it, it, takes, it has, uh, uh, takes a toll on our, our family life, of course. Do they get to join you on the road on occasions? To a certain extent. Our, our kids are in, in school and in the Swedish uh, school system that it does not allow for that sort of Hollywood s style when you just yank them out for three weeks and go somewhere and then come back for one week and do that. So you, you, we can't right. really do that. No. Yeah, that's a lot of times I always forget because when I talk to you, to me, it feels so America. I mean, you do because you've been here for so long. You've had such great success now. We were just talking about when you were approached to open for Iron Maiden. That had to be a wow kind of experience, I would think, when you had that chance. Do you mean the first time we did it or for the I'm American talking about tour? last year, because that last to me, year. Oh. it feels to me like that was kind of the springboard for where we are now. Yeah, no, it, when we got the offer, it was fantastic. Because we, we had been, uh, to, we've done tours or parts of tours with them, but it was always like, a gig here and there, and then we did a festival together with them, and then it was sort of jumping in and out. So we were really looking forward to possibly at some point doing a more of a consecutive tour together. Right. So when they when they offered the American tour, that it just felt like a that was a no brainer. That's exactly what we wanted to do, especially an American arena tour in the summer. That is, you know, that's a classic that you you need to do. Oh, absolutely. And we were just talking a year later. You'll be back here in like two weeks to do Barclays in a packed house. What's probably going to end up being a sold out show in just a year's time with probably not a lot of radio airplay still yet. It's still kind of an in infancy growing because I mean, I, I, read, I remember talking to you. We talked about how you were shunned, how people didn't when they were afraid because they were afraid of the backlash. But the world has seemingly only gotten more politically correct yet you continue to grow in popularity. How do you think that is? Uh, hard work. I mean, obviously, we, I think that as much as the music industry is supposed to have changed, I think that at the end of the day, what really matters is making good music. And you have to work that music. You have to out, go out, you have to tour. If you, if you have radio that's really good, it helps. It helps a lot. Um, but first and foremost, you have to tour. You have to tour and then tour and then you tour some more. And I'm sure the social media aspect of it helps out a whole lot as well. It does. If people talk about you, it, that also adds a lot. Even if they're talking shit about you, it, it also helps a lot, actually. <laughs> so the more people talk shit about you, the more you know, uh, traffic, it, it yields. Yes, true. Controversy usually yields positive results in most ways. Yes. Sometimes not so much in the world we're living in today, but in the music industry and the entertainment industry, yes. One of the things I want to bring up, because something you talked about, people talking about you poorly and things of that nature. I know you've talked a lot about bullying in the past, how you grew up, I grew up, face for radio, lots of bullying in my life. Still to this day, I kind of sort of feel, I mean, do you, I know you said you looked ahead at life, as growing up, like it was gonna come to an end maturely, but a lot of kids can't do that. 
You know, I, I had a son myself that was dealing with this in the last year, and you try and tell him the right words. But then I thought, geez, you know, it's never really stopping. Kind of where you are now, you still do deal with it to a degree, wouldn't you think? Well, I mean, I grew up in, in an environment where I ended up on both sides. So I've been talking about a little that um, as an as a music fan, as you know, I, I'm sort of I'm sort of the kind of person that sort of ends up a little bit on the outside. Um, but uh, depending on certain years and certain years in school, I was outsider for those years, and then I came into that little gang, and then I got then that was great and. And then I shifted schools for a while, and then I was the complete outsider. And so I've, I've been on both that, you know, I've, I've definitely seen on both sides how kids can be extremely cruel. And uh, I've definitely been not so nice as well. Yeah, which I feel. When you're forced very, into a corner, it happens. I'm sorry? When you get forced into a corner, sometimes those things happen. You have retribution. No, well, well, you know, it's a two-way street. Even well, though you don't not want only to, that, yeah. I've, I've, uh, I've definitely had points in time, especially when I was like early adolescence, like 13, 14, uh, when uh, you, know, you have a lot of things inside that plays tricks on you. Uh, adolescence being one and <laughs> yeah. finding your place in certain things. And, <laughs> Puberty and, and all so, those so I've definitely, on I've, yeah. I've definitely d done things in, at that age that I do not feel very proud of at and, all. And you're an incredibly strong person. You made a really good life for yourself. You've done some amazing things. You let the creativity flow. And I mean, when we go back and we talk about three papas in the past, but to me, where the band seems to be today, like with the Cardinal, the Cardinal seems like the man who was waiting in the wings, who was just waiting for his moment to take over the show, to pull and just take, he looks like a gangsta mixed. I mean, he does, a gangsta who would lead the most corrupt, craziest looking church ever, who's the life of the party. You'd never want him to hang around in your house, but he's fun to have over for dinner and drinks. Would I be pretty right in that? Would you Not think? for too long though. <laughs> a couple of hours and then that's about the end of it? Yeah, then he starts humping something, so it's like. <laughs> you just never know what to expect. But So the, the three papas, Mm. Entombed, encased, killed, as it were. That's where I get the whole gangster imagery there. Mm. Like something was a foul, and perhaps he would be the mastermind behind that. He seems to be shifty in that kind of a way. I don't know really what he is. I have high hopes for him to become a little bit more, or a little less of a rascal. Yeah. Um, Cocky, egotistical. You mean he is that, or you want him to be less? Uh, that's how I interpret the cardinal. Right. Well, I mean, that's the that's the idea with all these papas and cardinals that they are essentially a lot, oh, in a way, with a manner that maybe I wouldn't I wouldn't behave like that myself. And that's the fun thing about a character like that. It's a little bit Dracula. It's also a little bit Jack Clouseau and. Uh, but you get to manage it. At I the have the, the luxury of being able to step <laughs> out of it. Yes. So you, you, can, you can step into that, behave like a dick for a while, and then you just... <laughs> it's got to be a very unique, surreal kind of feeling. Because I'll be honest, you know, growing up through the years of Alice Cooper's and everybody that had theatrics to it, mm. no one has ever taken it in this direction before, which is, I think, what makes it so unique. And everybody, regardless of your age, wants to get in on it because it brings back some of that youth, what you remember as a kid, but it's completely different, and you cannot look away. You just have to be there. You have to see it. I guess so. <laughs> well, I, I, I can't answer that. But yeah, I mean, I, from, 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 uh, from a fan point of view growing up with that, I, I think that Ghost is very much the sort of band that I want to see, that I have seen, but spread out in, in different artists, it's, as you say. Like. It's like a labor of love, it really is. Yeah, I'd say that. Now, I imagine something like this has gotta have, obviously, vision, creativity. 
I think like a storyboard on the wall. Like there's a lot of different ways this could go. Do you really know where this is gonna end up? How long it's gonna go, where it's gonna go? What goes through your mind? I don't know where it's gonna end up. I know where I think it's going within a few years. I know a few things that I want to achieve with it. I mean, story-wise, uh, also obviously practical things that I want to achieve, but story-wise, I know that there are a few things that I really am looking forward to dig deeper into or to elaborate on that I think is a little bit deeper, a little bit more fundamental uh, than, I guess, our core message uh, at, at the first and the second record. I think that the idea of the, the last album with with uh, Papa Nil being the master and the Cardinal being the apprentice and them sort of fighting in a way uh, as you do when, when you have that relationship. Yeah. And, you know, the elder being the wiser, but also aware that he or she needs to pass on the torch to the younger talent. And the younger talent currently being a little shit that has to grow <laughs> up, you know? And, but, then, but that, and for me, and, and I think that that, that, that that speaks for itself. It's like, that's just part of life. That's part of growing up. Well, it's kind of, I guess, like life. We really don't know, outside of what you think's gonna happen in the next two years, what's really gonna happen, because there's a lot of story that writes itself, and you just kind of come along for the ride. That's pretty much where this is gonna go. Yeah, yeah. And, and what I really enjoyed by doing it this way as well is that you sort of put push something that was eventually gonna become a little bit more of a comfort zone. You push it towards a place where it's not really comfy. And then you're asking people to follow. And you hope that they do. And then you do. And, and it, it's like a give and take. It, yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. It's, 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 it, it's interesting for me too to sort of try to find a way to do it because I don't know. I don't know where we are. I don't know where we're going. I know the story, I know that, but I mean, I don't know if that is something people are keen on knowing in five years, what's I was, up. I was gonna ask, because everybody views this different, when you, when you do, do something like this, how much fan feedback interaction, what do you see, what do you, do you limit yourself to anything, do you absorb everything in, do you just watch the grand landscape of what people are saying in social media, not the media part of it, but the true honest fans that are here for the art? I am quite aware, but I am, I am more interested in hearing the general, what, what is the general outcome of what we just did yesterday? Because if, if you are, if you go online and you follow every social media outlet that are in some way or form wallowing in whatever we're up to, it could also be very um, harmful. Yeah, well, <laughs> I you think in all, in all of our aspects we see that because you do, yeah. I mean, it's just like when you go on social media and you see your friends and everybody gets into politics and then they get into religion, which mix those two together and it's usually a catastrophic, epic failure of some part because it's just, there's no win and you kind of mix a little bit of everything in here as life. I mean, because especially with rats in particular, that was one of those I think that really connected with a lot of people, you know, lyrically how everybody got drawn into it. Because you've always been kind of shunned so much, at least what I've seen, everybody comes at you religiously, like you are the devil. Like back in the day, I remember seeing a show, it was a Maiden show, probably 83, 84. And there were literally people picketing out front that we were all going to hell as we were walking through. And I remember, and I'm 13, and I'm walking in, and I'm like going, oh, okay, this is what going to hell's like. I'm good. I'm walking through the door. I, I mean, was walking into the Nassau Coliseum. Yeah, I didn't know any better. I'm just like, really? <laughs> you guys are taking this a little bit too far. And I mean, I know we had, there was a priest, was it Texas? I think that was trying to double down on you there for a little while. And it wasn't about you. He's like, well, I just don't understand how the venue would have allowed a show like this to come in. And it's like, because it's a show. No one's roasting goats on steaks or it's like there's this weird perceived notion that follows you like no one ever really looks no well what what he should have looked at just the day before after was the, the little spike in ticket sales that he caused yeah 
And that's the thing. So many people end up trying to come in and are like, I'm just trying to save the world. I'm just trying to do good things. But you're actually furthering the cause, which in this case, I don't think is a bad thing because like I've heard you mention the word humility a lot. When you come to a show, when you leave a ghost show, you have a very unique feeling. You feel well-rounded. I mean, I feel enlightened because it's such an entertaining show. And musically, you have so many different genres. I mean, you could go back musically, it's like harmonies of the 60s and the 70s, a little bit of everything in there. Because so many people want to pigeonhole you into like, they're supposed to be this dark, heavy metal band. I'm like, because they're from Sweden? That's not how it works. There's a lot in there that's in your musical soul that I think that's why people are so drawn into it. That's how you touch so many people. Would you think I'm right? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah, probably. I mean, I, when I, I talk actually to people, don't know. There, honestly, there's, there's probably several different factors, but I, I think that in, in this day and age where a lot of bands sound different, I think we sound our own way. I think we're doing something that is not um, uh, omnipresent generally in the, in the rock scene. Right. There are obviously other bands that do shock rock, of course, needless to say. But I, I think that we're, we're definitely filling a little bit of a, at least upcoming void. I think you are, because really in the landscape of rock, there isn't anything like you right now. There just isn't. And it's a little bit different every time, which again, I think is what keeps people coming back for more. They never know what's next, where the story is going to take them. And that's what makes it. And like you, know, like you said, I, I know a little bit, but I really don't know. I mean... There's a lot of artists, case in point, I think Ozzy, when he was 40-something, said, there's no way I could be doing this to my 60s. No way, <laughs> he just couldn't do it. And then he did his No More Tours 2, and now we're, No More Tours, now we're doing No More Tours 2 in 60-something. Now that was I mean, 92. Yeah, 92. And I mean, so this is one of those things, you'll just follow the journey as long as it goes. Doesn't matter, age is relative. It's just doing what you love, and as long as people are coming along for the ride, you're in. Right, I mean, that's, that's what, what more can you wish for, really? I mean, I'm just, trying to see what we're gonna do. I know basically what we're doing practically from now until the end of the cycle and what we we're hoping to achieve. I know what the next album will be sort of like. It, it, I don't have the record here, I, I can't play it to you. Yeah. But I know basically I, that I, I have one album inside that I want to create. And then I have quite solid idea what I want to do for that live show in the future. But longer than that, I, you know, who knows right. what if we will even, if there will be a demand and interest. And if it's not there in five years, maybe there, there is an, 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 there's an interest there in 15 years. It sounds like you who have knows? a very good streaming consciousness. In other words, when you're moving through things, you don't, do you, do you, do you ever, ever dabbled with writer's block? Has it ever come to you or is your mind just constantly morphing? I mean, I, my, when, when I do have a writer's block, it's more like a more of a temporary thing. I have a tendency to I write all the time, and I don't need like a certain instrument to write. I write in my head. I I record stuff on the phone. I write things down. I just remember things. <laughs> yeah, you're a guitarist by nature, right? That was your one. That was what you were really good at. That's that would that would probably be the instrument that I could say that I I excel with a little. But I'm not a I'm not a like kick-ass guitar player. Either. Right. I'm 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 a good I'm really good at writing songs. I'm good at writing. I can write for an ensemble. I can write a rock song with exactly how I want the drums and the bass and the guitars and the other guitar and the clavier and these are the harmonies. But I'm not like, I, 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 I'm not a, like a kick-ass guitar player who could right. like, like fill in for, for Vivian Campbell, no. <laughs> I can no. play his rhythm things, but I can't like jump in and, and into any, uh, the same way that I, as a singer, I, I, can, do, I can do Ghost very well, but I, I can't sing anything, like I, I, I can't, I jump into, into a Dio cover band, no. Well, it's because, it's you know, sometimes guys get into it for one reason and it takes them another. 
you know, some guys get into entertainment, but they wanted to be a rock star. They ended up being an actor first, and it went vice versa. But you, I mean, have you always had a theatrical side all the way back to your youth? I mean, theater, things of that nature. I mean, you have an incredible grasp on it because this all seems to come from your mind. I mean, how many people are in this? You as the director, but how many people help you shape? How many people do you run ideas by, or is this just your baby period? The whole greatest, the big scheme of things is well, there's a lot of people involved. That, that per default, is moving the thing forward. Yeah. Um, when it comes to my acting or performance or on stage behavior, I, I think that even though it's very infused and very influenced, I, the same way, the same way that I write music as a, as a sort of a mixture homage to a lot of music that I like, be it everything from Bruce Springsteen to some weird eclectic Italian prog rock from 1972. Um, it's just a mixture. And, and the same thing with, with the onstage thing is very influenced. And if you, I mean, I am, I grew up in the 80s. I grew up with, you know, Richard Pryor, Eddie Murphy, yeah. Chevy Chase, uh, Peter Sellers. Um, a lot of that goes through my character. I can see that. My, yes. My, yes. I'm very influenced by that. I'm very influenced by um, Monty Python. And yeah, oh, Monty Python. Oh. The one where our parents tried to shun us, but yet we still found it anyway. Did you ever watch <laughs> The Young Ones growing up at all? I did. One of I, my I, favorite I shows of all time, because I got so many, much exposure to bands at that point I'd never seen before. Right. Because musically in my house, I was shunned. If it wasn't old school gut bucket country, as I would call it, to big band sounds, there wasn't uh, a lot of rock and roll. So MTV to me kind of birthed it when I saw the young ones and I saw Motorhead for the first time and Lemmy yeah. with the moles and the microphone down and I'm going, what is this? I mean, it was, it was crazy because it was the show but with the music woven into it and it just kind of opened my eyes like, wow, there's some really cool things out there I gotta be a part of. So after all these years, I've always learned to try something. Don't just look at it at face value and go, not today. <laughs> no, I, I like, and that's, that's why I really enjoy your show so much because there's something different every time but it relates to so many different people which is why if you're watching you're already a fan you already know these things but if this is new to you and you're getting to know tobias for the first time the show is captivating and you never know and really i think probably even though you're doing what two hours and 25 minutes i think right now that's pretty amazing that's a long show with an intermission in the middle yeah it's pretty long i can't say the last time i went to a show and had an intermission in the middle that's amazing we have to because it's uh, usually when you when you when you see bands that play that long, they have a tendency to fill it up with drum solos and guitar solos yeah. and yeah. longer segues right. of, of that. And uh, even though I'm not like against like a good drum yeah round, you know, I I I wanted us to try to uh, orchestrate it in a different way and and. Uh, I've seen a couple of shows that had an intermission and, and it just feels like a very good way to just start over. Yeah. Which is hard to do when you're doing just a consecutive concert from start to finish. Man, so catch it, your breath, if you will, almost. You almost need that moment to kind of reset and reflect a little bit. The good thing about that as well that, is that since our albums, as many rock albums, has a, have a tendency to have like a big opener, and maybe you have a ballad on each record, one or two, you, and, and a big sort of grand, pompous finale. If you're doing that in a consecutive set, it's kind of hard because you, 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 yeah. it, it can be a little like ballad heavy, and it, or it can be a little bit like, oh, now how's the grand finale here? And then there's another grand finale after that, grand finale, another one, but when you have two acts, you can sort of orchestrate them as you would. It's kind of like, that's kind of like filming two films at the same time. Yeah. So you, you know that we can save that scene for later because we're going to restart. Each set needs to have like a dramaturgical structure that starts big and then goes down and big result. 
It's amazing. I, I just, what the work that you put into this, I know I was, I was reading one interview where you talked about sometimes you reflect and you think about how many people are counting on you and your vision and everything else. Overwhelming, but it's, to me, it's, I find it very fulfilling when you, when you found your place and you're doing good things and you can have a lot of people come along with you for the ride to make it even greater. It's a really fulfilling feeling. I tell by the smile on your face. Do you feel the same way? I mean, you know everybody's counting on you, but just to be a part of something so cool, to know that it's going to keep growing, it's got to be amazing. Absolutely. I mean, especially on tour, that's when you really can physically see the support. Yeah. You, that, that's when you know, that's when you, I, uh, that's a fantastic thing that I, uh, th despite the fact that I, I, I would definitely want it, if in, in a, an alternative life, I would have loved to work in film. I love film. I grew up watching a lot of film. I, watch, I, I, I think very cinematically. But the one thing that I would miss, the people that I know that work in film, they don't ever, obviously you don't film it and then you, you go and recreate it. Right. So you, a lot of, oftentimes, you, you know, as an actor, um, that film that just started showing, that was part of your life two years ago. Yeah. So you, you feel very distanced which can, in one way, can be, I guess, a positive thing, but, but from a, from a creating something together and those magical moments are definitely uh, plenty of them being on tour and knowing that we were here one year ago and we were here two years ago and four years ago and five years ago and every time we played a bigger place. Yeah. Or last time we were here, we'd half sold, and now it's full. So you know that you can physically see everybody getting the growth. <laughs> and would, would you, everybody has a different take. Smaller, larger venue. I know larger probably gives you better theatrics to do more stuff. Smaller may be a little bit harder, but at the end of the day, or are they both good? What do you think? I tend to go for larger. <laughs> Uh, because of course. the if it's large enough, you can control. If you if it's large enough to the point where you can actually build your stage, yeah. you can build the stage in a in a way that will allow for there to be intimacy. So, where I want to go is where you can control that so that you, you have that, those sort of walkways out into the crowd and you can have like a touchy sort of feel over here, but yeah. you can still do the big show that reaches out to all those people over there. Um, but just from a production standpoint with this band that I have this vision for, I think bigger is better. But as a guitar player, like, liking, you know, uh, uh, being able to sort of have your own amp and just playing punk rock. I, yeah. I, I love doing that in a small venue as well. So it's, it's, it's just that with Ghost, I like doing it bigger. Is there some place you've been that has been the most special that sticks out in your mind? I know we were just talking about how memory is hard to keep it all together, but is there some place where you go in the, in the night, and it doesn't have to be here in America, it be anywhere in the world, where the vibe from the crowd, maybe it was somewhere near the beginning that just was so captivating, you were just over the top. There are some places that really stick out. Um, um, there are cities in America that are, that are amazingly sort of autonomous in a way, mm -hmm. in, in the, the sense that you, know, you have a certain response over here, 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 here. And then all of a sudden in one city, it's just like, wow. Yeah. Uh, in Europe, especially the, 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 the northern you go, the more northern up you go in, in Europe, it has a tendency to sort of mellow out. If you start down in Na Naples <laughs> and you just go straight up, it sort of just gradually goes less and less and less. Everybody sort of just stands still. They like it. It's just that they don't like engage as much. But then you go to Poland, and Poland is just crazy. 
I think it, that's it, probably some of the craziest videos I've seen where it's like mosh pits in America. I've got nothing on what they're doing. I mean, Poland, Poland is, is just is amazing. <laughs> it's you got to sign a waiver before you walk in. It's crazy. It's it's absolutely mind blowingly wonderful playing in in, in Poland, um, Argentina, Brazil. Yeah, Brazil. Chile, I think to me because Brazil, Mexico, I've always seen crazy shows. It, but you know. The, the, but then there might be other things that are lost as well. It's like sometimes you hit certain countries where people generally might not speak much English. Mm -hmm. And if you see us playing in, in some of those countries, a lot of the onstage banter and the jokes are sort of decimated yeah. because they fly sort of over people's heads a little. And that goes for some places in Europe as well because our character or at least the, the the talkative character is very based on american slang and, yeah he yeah. he's he's a sort of he's a sort of a stereotypical immigrant american dad grandpa you know he has that sort of lingo right right yeah so that's, that's uh, perfect in, that's... but but he still speaks fluent english yeah so but 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 with, with certain grammar mistakes and 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 that that sort of makes up for some fun misunderstandings but some of those jokes they just fly over like a <laughs> balloon of lead <laughs> like a dead I, house yeah. yeah so so and, and that also might take a little twist on certain certain places where you have this rabid crowd and you can yell brussels sprouts and everybody goes, ah! yeah, yeah, yeah. but you cannot tell them a joke because they will they will scream over that joke you know? right or it just gets lost in translation yeah. and it doesn't even matter anymore so, is, is there a place you've always wanted to play you haven't gotten the chance to step into yet oh many places many places i every year that we're, we're looking at like a, a year of touring I constantly feel, even to places where we have been, but we just, we don't, we just don't do it right. repeatedly, repeatedly. And people, obviously, as soon as you uh, announce a tour, people are like, oh, you completely forgot about this, right. Mark. Sure, yeah. yeah. Um, you're like, Ugh. oh, you know, if they only knew work. that we were, were working on this, and right. you know, uh, but. There, there are certain places that I would really like to hit that that are obviously far away. You don't really go there unless you're a big band. Yeah. Um, and it's not even weird places. It's just that most bands don't go to Hawaii. Right. Most bands don't go to Anchorage or, or Alaska. Um, gigs in on Iceland is sort of far in between. Um, Places in Asia that we've we've not played. We've been to Japan once, but uh, I'd like to return to Japan, which is obviously not a weird market in any way. It's just, no. it's just just hasn't happened yet. No, we've been focusing yeah. on America and, and and Europe. Conquer the Americans, conquer Europe, and then it's oh, it's Japan. Why not? Only logical. It's kind of funny too because some bands find uh, exposure there in Japan first before anywhere else. It's crazy. It's almost like sometimes it's the last place you go and then you find it and then you backtrack. There's right. bands throughout their career that have done that. And it's like, wow, that's kind of strange, but yeah, to each no, their own, as they say. Well, first we took Manhattan. Yes. And then we took Berlin. So. <laughs> and you're going to take it again in like two weeks. So it's good times. Tobias, I thank you for this chance to sit down and chat. I love these intimate conversations. It's not so much an interview. It's just kind of chatting. You guys get to be third party, kind of hanging out. Do you think the Cardinal's going to make it? Do you think he's got some longevity here, or is his ego going to tear him down? I I hope. I hope that's really the only thing he can have, right? I hope. I hope he does. I would love to see him in a skull paint. I think. Oh yeah. Oh, that could be interesting. Yeah. He's got to have a really interesting uh, after-show party. I would have to think. A man about the town. I could only imagine. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Tobias Forge, everybody. Thank you so much for watching for wherever you are. Intimate conversation on Ghost. I'm the Big Rig. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much.